just a, a graphic idea. The intent is the blue arrow. So you're heading down, and you're, before anything is there, you're aiming at, the, at an empty spot, saying, I'm going to get some thing to come out there. And then depending on what you're, uh, which direction the whole situation is, that thing fills up with meaning, re meaning, meanings relative to what, uh, whatever it is, yes? So um, this, I think, uh, is what leads us, yes, to our, to our ladybug. Now, um, it's this whole realm of things that fuse or come to us in the unconscious mind. And it's the moment that they fuse into the object that we become conscious. For that, I'd need to bring some other slides and show you how it works. But you know it from double drawings and things like that. Our mind clicks into one view, into another view. And we're not conscious of the build-up in any way. The fusion, the build-up, whatever you want to call it, the coming together, happens out of consciousness. And consciousness awakens with the object, with the concept, that arrives. So from this, we can conclude the mind, conscious, not conscious, and in both infused with intent, produces concepts. There's no essence to the concept, but in acting as if there was one, zoom, yes, the arrow, a concept is formed. And such is the power of intent. Um, since time is short, I'll just one little anecdote for the, for the end. If we look at intent and causality, we saw intent as the point, the end point is singular, and that's the name of what's going on. The beginning uh, fuses back into the whole system. And if we, and this is as much part of reality as is the same structure reversed, which is causality, as it's usually described without going into. And so you have the initial impulse. The impulse spreads. A, a, one billiard ball knocks another billiard ball. That one knocks a few others. That knocks a few others. Uh, energy dissipates in friction, and so on and so forth. And in the end of it all, it's all dissipating out into the world as the, the world's entropy rises. And so we have a form, a, con a, con a contrast of forms. And it's interesting to note that causality, of course, is with the push. And intent is being drawn to an end. These are just a few thoughts that come from, uh, that, that we have time for right now, in peering into how concepts are formed, and taking back from the article uh, in The New Scientist, where the person is trying to describe things in terms of what you see and what you don't see, and leaving out, according to the way I understand it, the whole impulse of intention and, of course, its subjectivity. And with that, I conclude. When you played with your fingers, and I said, Ladybug. Yes. I didn't think. I knew. Right. It wasn't a thought process, it was a, a, a knowing. Yes. So there wasn't any cause or effect, it was. Right. How do you explain that? Oh, uh, th there are two things there. First of all, if you want an explanation of your intuition in knowing what I was thinking about, there are people here who can speak about that much better than I could, yes? <laughs> but if you're talking about the fact that you did come up with something, yes? Sure, you came up with Ladybug, but the whole idea, what drove you to, an, to an, a, a concrete object, 
yes, to a, some kind of entity, some thing, is the, set, the mindset you had of, or the intent of reaching such a single object. Because the mind can be geared to, in another way, so we don't do that. Well, I, I, you, yes, you, you certainly picked up on something that was happening in my mind, too. Yes? <laughs> uh, yes. P Peter, uh, that was such a wonderfully artistic presentation of uh, the, the uh, importance of uh, intention. Uh, but I, I wonder whether you've left out the other side, uh, okay. which is that uh, a, a whole large side of the cone uh, that explores possibilities. And we tend to emphasize in discussing consciousness uh, 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 too often uh, a specific willed outcome rather than the distributed attention that explores possibilities intuitively with the right brain and so forth. And I wonder if you would comment on that. Thank you very much for bringing it up because I I, I couldn't arrive there in the 20 minutes that I had, and, or 15 minutes. And yes, very definitely. This intent at finishing with an end, this particular endpoint is one structure of intent. Yes? And what you're talking about, a right brain or something like that, we can look at what, it, what happens when you let go of that intent, and, so, and there's another structure forming. Thank you. What about intentionless processes, such as meditation and so on, in which one tries to remove intention so as to come to a, uh, some sort of a conclusion or concept or, or formation? Um, the, again, the intent that I described here is the intent of the denotative conscious a rational mind. And it's also the drive behind a classical science. There is a letting go of all of that. Yeah? And the letting go of all of that is that it allows for a whole new possibility of, uh, of, of integration. In fact, I was going to do an exercise with you for that, but I, I think we, it's, it's finished. Yes, no time now. So, but uh, in other words, there is such a thing as letting go to get the big picture also of stepping back and wanting to get a feel of a hole because holes don't come through. A, a hole is not made by the rational mind. The concept lands in, in our lap, so to speak, ready-made, but behind that is the working of the unconscious mind which is producing it and if we take away the goal of ending up with some particular thing, there are all sorts of possibilities of the mind uh, that are there. I don't know if I answered, but that's mm -hmm. good. Thank you.